let's continue our work with telling time. We're going to start with the hour hand pointing at 7. Now I want you to move the minute hand and use your five divisions to show 20 minutes after the hour. So students would have their own clock here and they're doing it on their own duty clock, paper clock, whatever clocks they have, even if it can, is a digital slide like this. Class, where should the minute hand point? Class, 4. You're right, because 4 fives is 20. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Boys and girls, what time is it? Class, 7.20. Boys and girls, now show where you would move the hour hand um, now that we know that it's 7.20. Did you move it a little bit, about halfway, or close to 8? Class, about halfway. So that's the protocol you would go through. Essentially, you just want to make sure that kids have all of those steps, that they see how it's related to divisions, to know where that minute hand goes, to see that they have to move that hour hand once they know the minute, um, and if it's a little bit halfway or close to the next hour. And then, of course, you can move your slides over on the right to make sure that we have um, all of those correct answers. So let's try another one. Put the hour hand at 7 for now. So all the students would have their own clocks and the student leader can put this one at seven. Now move the minute hand and use your five divisions to show five minutes after the hour. So if I have to go five minutes and I am in, in, in five minute intervals, five divided by five equals class one. You're right, it should be pointing to the one. Type the time in the digital clock. Boys and girls, what time is it? Class 7.05. Now show where we would move the hour hand. Would we move it a little bit, about halfway, or close to eight? Class, a little bit. Boys and girls, what time is it? 7.05. Put the hour hand at seven for now. Move the minute hand to use your five divisions to show 35 minutes after the hour. We're gonna start here. If I'm at 35 and I'm gonna count by fives, 35 divided by five, class, seven. Our minute hand should be pointing to seven. Boys and girls, what time is it? Class, 7.35. Now, if you need to, you can have class count with you or the student leader to prove that it is 7.35. Boys and girls, now let's move the hour hand. Should the hour hand move a little bit, about halfway, or closer to eight? Class, and they should say, closer to eight we're past the halfway point. So if we need to turn that into a quick turn and talk or call on someone, why is it close to eight and not halfway or just a little bit? So you'll continue that. You can see that these all have that purple background. So the time, the hour stays the same. Then we get to the green background um, and we would do something very similar. Put the hour hand at seven for now. Move the minute hand and use your five divisions to show how many um, minutes are after the hour, or to show 13 minutes after the hour. If we're here and we have 13 and we count by fives, we know that 13 divided by five is going to be two with two, three left over. 11, 12, 13. Because five times two is 10, 11, 12, 13. Boys and girls, what time is it? Class? 7.13. Boys and girls, should we move the hour hand a little bit, about halfway or close to eight? Class, a little bit. And then you can call on someone again to tell us how and why. So you get several slides, but you can see we get a rhythm there about how we can ask those questions and make it choral response. While students have their own clocks, maybe they do one clock together, then they do the next one on their own, then they do the next one with the student leader. It's really your choice. Now let's tell time as minutes before the hour. Think about how many minutes add up to 60. I will point to a digital clock time. At the signal, you say how many minutes before the hour. Boys and girls, uh, read the time, 7.51. Boys and girls, how many minutes before the next hour? Class, nine minutes before eight. Boys and girls, read the time, 7.59. Boys and girls, how many minutes before the next hour? Class, one minute before eight. You're right. And you would repeat that now for a couple of more um, rounds. Then you get to lesson two and notice you get a whole new set of um, slides. So you're gonna try to get through as many of these clock slides as you can. End on this one 
and then uh, you'll get your next lesson. So you're gonna do as many slides as you can in five minutes, but make sure you leave time to do this final peach um, color slide at the very end. Um, that all continues until you get to lesson four and five. So lesson four and five, I changed the slide just a little bit. This is one um, that you can choose to use. I incorporated it only because if students are not yet making sophisticated moves, meaning they uh, aren't adding bulk times and they need to make their jumps for better, uh, lack of better words, they need to make um, more jumps or more chunks of time, then you have more space here. Okay, so boys and girls, what time is it? 1.15. Boys and girls, we're going to go three hours and 36 minutes. We want to know what is the end time. If I start at 1.15 and we go three hours and 36 minutes, what should I add first? And the class would say, let's just say, they would say four. And if I added four minutes, what time would it be? Class, and they would say it would be 1.19. Boys and girls, what would you add next? Class, one. Boys and girls, what time is it? One twenty. Boys and girls, um, now we have four, five. We've done five minutes, but we have 31 minutes left. Boys and girls, what would you add next? One. Boys and girls, what time is it? One twenty-one. Boys and girls, now we've added four, five, six minutes. How many minutes do we need to add? Class, 30. Boys and girls, what time is it? Think about it. Class 151. Boys and girls, now we need to add three hours. Think about it. Class 451. Boys and girls, our end time is 451. Let's check to see if we're right. How many hours did we add up all together? Three. How many minutes did we add up all together? 30. 34, 35, 36. Boys and girls, what's another way we could have added that time? So this helps us if we have to go kind of step by step with small increments, right? But if you have these slides, which are the intended slides, that you would go through this together, you would see that we added five, then we added 30, then we added one, which is a little more sophisticated, and then we'd say, what's another way we could have added three hours and 36 minutes? You can record that time here. So you can turn it into a turn and talk, kids work quickly together to come up with this. But we're specifically looking for, we have a start, we have the elapsed time, we need to know what time we're going to end on. Now we know it's 4.51, so what's another way we could have added that time? So again, you have this um, little intermediate slide just to help if they need to track different time amounts that are um, smaller. And then you can transition them to this where we are making those bigger jumps and then they come up with an alternative way. So we continue that, there's blue slides to continue that same process multiple times. Then we do it again, but now we notice that we have the start time, we have elapsed um, time, and we need to know our end time. So this would be lesson five. So the same thing that happened here for lesson four. Then we get to lesson six through eight, and once again, I gave you a slide that just allowed more options here in the middle so that you could track smaller chunks of time and then go here to become more sophisticated with your counting. So if I'm here, I would say, boys and girls, what time is it? 6.23. Boys and girls, what do we not know? Class, the elapsed time. We know we have to end on 10.57. So boys and girls, if I'm going to get to 10.57, what would you add first? Class, and maybe they would say four hours. Boys and girls, if I add four hours, what time or what hour is it? Class, it would be 10.23. Boys and girls, I now have added, and I have till the 10 o'clock hour. I need to get to 57 minutes. What would you add next? Class, seven minutes. Boys and girls, what time is it now? 10.30. Boys and girls, I need to get to um, 57. How many minutes would you add now? Class, 27. Class, what time is it? 10, 57. Boys and girls, that's my end time. How many hours did I add? Class, four. Boys and girls, how many minutes did I add? Class, 34. So 
any of these you can turn into a number talk. So how can we add 27 and 7 quickly? Some kids are going to be able to do it quickly in their head. We want them to verbalize it for other kids. If you can't do that quickly in your head, what's a way to break down 7? They might say, well, I did 27, and I know that 7 is the same as 3 and 4. So 27 plus 3 equals 30, and then I'd have 4 left over. This is a really great time to embed a quick number talk. You don't want it to take forever. You still only have 5 minutes for quick practice, um, but it's a great way to get that going. I also included for you here a number line so that on that first white slide before you get to the ones where you now just build some of that um, quick automated thinking, um, you can also now put it on a number line because we know that's how many um, students will be assessed on this skill. So now we can start at 623 and we can show our various ways of, um, we'll get our pen here, our various ways of going forward till we get to 1057. So if I start here and I know that it's 623, you told me that we were going to move four hours first. Hours are mountains. One, two, three, four. Let's count. 623, 723, 823, 923, 1023. Boys and girls, then you said that we would count by minutes. Boys and girls, how many minutes did you count first? You counted seven. So we could do 27, 28, 29, 30. We can do it that way, or we could do a smaller hill and just call it seven. So we know that this is one hour. This is one hour. This is one hour. This is one hour. Then we have seven minutes, and we know that we ended on 10, 30. It should have been 10.23. And then we from 10.30, we did a bigger jump and we did 27 minutes. And we know that we ended on 10.57. So if you'd like to take the time to put it on a number line or to have students put it on a number line, that would be an added bonus to practice and build some automaticity with. So you'll continue in that way, my friends, until you get to, um, I think it's all the way through the lessons, actually. You'll get all the way through. So you can see like, when I get to lessons nine, now we have um, a starter slide, and then you have three slides per day um, to help students get better at how they can track elapsed time.